In this series of messages, we've been focusing on the Sermon on the Mount. It's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapters 5, 6, and 7. Did you know that Matthew refers to God as our Father in Heaven or Heavenly Father more than all the other Bible writers by far? In this sermon, in fact, and throughout the whole Gospel, Matthew emphasizes a tension between heaven and earth. For example, when Jesus taught us to pray, he said, pray like this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Here in this uh, sermon, Jesus contrasts the heavenly father who is always good with our earthly fathers who are not always so good and are in fact capable of doing evil. There's a wonderful promise that we encounter that Jesus uh, makes when he returns again. All the glory and beauty of the kingdom of heaven will be fully revealed here on earth. It, and, and the earth will be made a new earth filled with God's glory forever. All evil and death will be done away with. It will be gone for good. Meanwhile, now here on the earth, God desires for us as his daughters and sons to bring foretastes of his heavenly kingdom in all of its beauty into this present time with all its sorrow and suffering and death so that many, many people would come to know and trust in Jesus. And that leads us to the portion of the Sermon on the Mount we want to focus on today. Let's read it from Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 through 11. It goes like this. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? If they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? There are incredible promises made in this passage. These promises made by Jesus point to the relationship that only He can give us to come in to the presence of the heavenly Father and be fully accepted. These promises are attached to direct commands. Ask, seek, knock. These are commands. And these three statements appear to be on an ascending scale of urgency. It's like a young child who needs something from his mom. And if she is near, he starts the, the process of asking. If she's not near, he goes looking for her, seeking for her everywhere. If he finds that his mom is in a room trying to get some private time, he starts knocking on the door. That's the knocking process. Does, does any moms here understand what we're talking about? Well, these promises are made to everyone. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Now, these promises are based on the fact that our Heavenly Father only gives good gifts to those who ask Him, and He desires to give them. This takes away all of our doubts and leads us to confidence and boldness before our Heavenly Father. He promises He will not give us a bad gift. Let me give you an example of this. I might ask the Lord to make me a millionaire so I could take care of my, myself and my family really well. And then God might say, you know, Sam, that actually would be a bad gift for me to give you. But here's what I'm going to do. In answer to your request, I'm going to take care of you for the rest of your life. Now that is a much better gift. And Sam, I only give really good gifts. Here's a story from Matthew's Gospel about a woman. She's a Canaanite woman, and the Canaanites were ancient pagan enemies of Israel. And this woman came to Jesus in great need. And she pled with Jesus to meet her need. And here's that story. It goes like this. Jesus and his disciples had left Galilee, where they were living at that time, and went up north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. That today would be in Lebanon. And a Canaanite woman who lived there showed up 
at the house where they were staying, and she started crying out to Jesus, O oh Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is possessed with a demon that torments her in horrible ways. But Jesus didn't respond to her at all. Finally, Jesus' disciples urged him, saying, Tell this woman to go away. She's bothering us with all her begging. So Jesus said to the woman, I was only sent to help the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But then she came and she worshiped Jesus and she said to him, Lord, please, please help me. And Jesus responded, it isn't right to take the food from the children and throw it to the household dogs. And the lady replied back to Jesus, well, that's true, Lord, but even the little dogs in the house are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Then Jesus said to the woman, Oh, you dear woman, your faith is great. Your request is granted. Your daughter is healed. You can read that story for yourself in Matthew chapter 15. Jesus knew at that time in his ministry he was primarily focused on the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was born into the Jewish people as a fulfillment of God's prophetic promise to their forefathers, and they were the ones who had first received and preserved God's Word written down in the Old Testament Scriptures. And during his ministry on earth, Jesus was primarily bringing the good news of God's salvation to the Jews. But something wonderful is depicted in this story. This Canaanite woman had somehow come to realize that Jesus had the power to save and deliver her and her daughter. And she came to Jesus asking and seeking and knocking in this great desperation that she felt. And, and, and you know what? Not only was the demon driven out of her daughter, but they found themselves members of God's eternal family the true Israel of God. And there are no second-rate citizens in God's household. We all come into the family through simple trust in Jesus. This salvation is for everyone who entrusts their lives to Jesus. What great news this is for us all. Now you may think that you've been ruled out, born into the wrong household, born into the wrong race, with all the wrong education and background, wrong sexual preference, made too many wrong moral choices. But no, no, this promise is for you. It's for absolutely everyone. There are no second-rate citizens in God's family. Put your trust in Jesus today. His promise is for you. Now, there are one more thing I want you to see as part of this Sermon on the Mount. In Luke's version of this sermon, he gives us an important insight into the good gifts that our Heavenly Father gives to those who ask, seek, and knock. Here is the conclusion of this passage as Luke recorded it. He said, If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? When we speak of the Holy Spirit, we're speaking of the personal presence of God Himself. The Holy Spirit is a person. He thinks, He talks, He acts, He rejoices, He can be grieved. He's the third person of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. One living God, three magnificent persons. When our Heavenly Father gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask, His presence is with you. And that's the greatest gift you'll ever receive. All the good gifts that Canaanite woman received that day when she cried out to Jesus came to her through the work of the Holy Spirit. Her daughter was delivered and set free from demonic power by the work of the Holy Spirit. The woman received new life and was made a member of the family of God through the work of the Holy Spirit in her heart through faith. Our Heavenly Father invites us to ask for the Holy Spirit. He wants to fill us to overflowing with His Spirit so we can do the things He has called us to do. 
The Holy Spirit empowers us to, the, to do the works of Jesus, proclaiming the good news of his kingdom to those around us, ministering healing to the sick, bringing new strength to the downcast. Doing these works brings glory to our Father in heaven. And the Father gladly gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. One day, Jesus shouted a message out to a big crowd of people that had gathered. Listen to what he said. Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scripture declares, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And then John adds this. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone who believed in him, but the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. When John adds that the Spirit would be given in this way after Jesus was glorified, he was pointing to the time a little later when Jesus would go to the cross and die there, and then after three days be raised from the dead so we could be made right with God. And a few weeks after he rose from the dead, just before he ascended to his Father in heaven and entered into his glory, he told his disciples to wait in expectation for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And a few days later, on the day of Pentecost, which was a celebration day in Israel, the Holy Spirit was given to them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages, and the Spirit gave them this ability. And in this way, they were praying and praising God in the Spirit. Well, this baptism with the Holy Spirit has continued to be poured out on the followers of Jesus to this present day. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit since you put your trust in Jesus? He wants to fill you and keep on filling you. Will you ask Him to fill you with His Holy Spirit today? Ask Him. He loves to fill people with His Spirit. Come in confidence. Come and drink in the Holy Spirit. Let that river begin to flow from your mouth in praises and prayer in the Holy Spirit. Let's take time to receive more of the Holy Spirit today. Start by asking Him for this gift of His Spirit. Then, in faith, begin to receive. He's faithful to give what He's promised to give. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. God bless you.